Good morning, afternoon or evening, whatever it is, wherever you are. Today I will be ranking the Bring It On series from worst to best. If you don't already know, then let me tell you that Bring It On is a series of cheerleading films that started back in 2000 with all its respective sequels being direct-to-video releases. But the success of the first film prompted it to be made into a musical aptly titled Bring It On The Musical, hence the t-shirt I'm wearing. But we are here to talk about the movies, so let's start the ranking. So coming in 6th in the ranking is the 6th installment in the series 2017's Bring It On Worldwide Cheer Smack, or as it is stylized, Bring It On Worldwide Hashtag Cheer Smack. Whoever came up with the idea to include a hashtag deserves a cheer smack in the face. Directed by Robert Adetui and written by Alison Faust, this installment was released 8 years after the previous film in the series and it just shouldn't have been done. The film sees character Destiny, captain of the three-time national champion cheerleading squad The Rebels, challenged to a global cheer showdown by an edgy new team called The Truth. The cheer goddess organises a virtual battle for squads for all around the world. This film fails to live up to the previous installments and for a movie about cheerleaders who are meant to excite people, I sad they're not remotely excited. It takes the worst aspects of the modern era and puts them into a movie while overemphasizing social media culture to the point where it kills the story and ultimately the movie itself. If you are not a fan of Bring It On, then I recommend avoiding this movie because watching it will only make you hate the series more and if I'm honest, the cheer routines weren't very impressive. Coming in fifth in this ranking is the second installment in the franchise, 2004's Bring It On Again. Directed by Damon Santo Stefano and written by Claudio Grazioso, Brian Gunn and Mark Gunn, this original sequel centers around a story about when students can't get onto their college cheerleading team, they form their own squad and prepare for a cheer off. Firstly, this is IMDb's synopsis and it's incorrect. The film's plot is far more stupid. It follows a college student who makes it on her dream college cheer squad and decides to quit because of how the socialite captain treats people and in turn her friend also quits. Still determined to be part of a cheer squad because screw education, right? She decides to form her own squad with the help of her best friend because frankly she isn't capable of doing anything without her friend's help during this entire film. I hate the socialite aspect, it was highly unnecessary and didn't make sense. The idea of forming a cheer squad for a school that already has one is also dumb and why they needed to face off is beyond me. This new squad is made up of ballerinas, thespians, martial artists and somehow these two cheerleaders managed to mould them into top notch cheerleading athletes in a matter of weeks. I have no idea how. The characters, no, well they kind of sucked. But the music used especially during Cheers was great and the cheer performances themselves were actually pretty good too. It was just the overall plot itself that was a dud. In fourth place is the third film in the franchise, 2006's Bring It On All or Nothing, previously known as Bring It On Yet Again. Smart move changing the titles. Directed by Steve Rash and written by Alison Faust, this installment sees a student transfer to a rough high school and trying to join the cheerleading squad and facing off against the head cheerleader and her former school in preparation for a cheer-off competition. What I loved about this film was the cheer routines. They were awesome and I 100% loved them. Choreography was tight and had a really good balance of dancing and stunt work, but where this film fails in one area is how it overplays the racial aspects. For example, our transfer student, played by Hayden Panettiere, has gone from a very affluent school on the good side of town to an underprivileged school in the ghetto. Now, while she's in her white school, she seems normal, smart and friendly. In her new school, Wow, suddenly she turned into super vanilla Barbie and it was painful hearing her constantly being called white girl. It was playing up stereotypes which was unnecessary, but the worst part was character Winnie played by M. Rylan. I mean, her entire character can be described in two quotes from character Amber. The first being... Somebody get that girl a pole. Yeah. And the second being... S-L-U-T! What does that spell? Winnie! Uh, best lines of the entire movie and highly accurate. This character is Psycho Slap Barbie. She is an evil drill sergeant of a captain endangering the lives of her teammates, causing arm breaks and starvation, while screwing her friend's boyfriend very blatantly and announcing it to the whole school. Did she even care teachers were there to hear that? Obviously not, but yeah, this was just uncomfortable all around. Coming third in the ranking is the fourth installment, 2007's Bring It On, In It To Win It. Directed by Steve Rash and written by Alison Faust and Elena Song. 
In it, Southern California high school senior Carson arrives at an all-important cheer camp nationals determined to lead her squad, the West High Sharks, to victory. But chic New Yorker Brooke and her team, the East High Jets, are equally steadfast in their pursuit of the competition's coveted spirit stick. We're going to overlook the awkward West Side Story comparisons. I think the movie's main point is about people pretending to be something they're not because they're afraid of who they are being rejected. But the fact everyone has a persona they're hiding is definitely pushing it. I don't enjoy how there were so many moments where people suddenly bust out into a chair or off like nobody is that organized. I think the rival team love story isn't necessary and didn't really work for me. Also, I don't think the performances are that great, but I appreciate that the focus really is on cheerleading. We have a cheer camp where people go to grow their skills, build team camaraderie, there is a good logical sense of competition, and the routines are a lot of fun to watch, and I enjoy that we do see people coming together and moving past differences. So I enjoy that there are more pros than cons, but seriously, everyone fighting over a bedazzled stick is just stupid. I fought over a stick once in 10th grade. You know what happened? I sprained my ankle and was on crutches for a week. So my PSA to all of you is don't fight over sticks. Just don't do it. Coming in second in the ranking is the fifth installment 2009's Bring It On Fight to the Finish. Directed by Billy Woodruff and written by Alison Faust, it follows Lena, a tough, sharp-witted Latina cheerleader from East LA who transfers to a posh West Los Angeles high school after her mother remarries and Lena finds herself a fish out of her environment at her new high school. It's amazing how as each film in the series goes along, the uniforms get smaller and smaller and smaller. I mean, why even bother putting them in clothes at all? Just have them run around naked. I appreciate that this has an underlying message about family and not just the blood kind. I think those moments gave it more heart. Cheer routines are brilliant. I do think the camera bounced around too much during the performances towards the end, which meant you didn't see enough of the routines as a whole, which I would have liked. I hate all the snobby entitled characters, but unlike All or Nothing, in this film it works because it's not about race, it's about social and economic classes clashing. The rivalry makes sense, but I think how fast Lena turned a hopeless team into these pros was unrealistic, and the whole notion of her somehow getting her two besties into a new affluent school just for the sake of cheerleading makes zero sense. But performances are good, story is good, message is good, and routines are good, so it's worth second place. And coming in first, making it the best of the franchise, is the original 2000's Bring It On. Directed by Peyton Reed and written by Jessica Bendinger, it sees a champion high school cheerleading squad discover its previous captain stole all their best routines from an inner city school and must scramble to compete at this year's championships. The originals are usually the best, and this one certainly is. It's fun, very high school oriented, fun characters, great cheer routines that are perfectly choreographed to reflect their teams. I feel like the entire tone of the film can be found in a quote from Kirsten Dunn's character, Torrance. The competition is still the most logical of the franchise. Teams from schools around the country compete to be the best in the country. Even the rivalry is good. We have a captain who has to fix the damage done by her old captain while staying true to herself and fighting honorably. And we have the rival team who have been ripped off and downtrodden and missed their chance to show how good they are and do something good for their school, finally get their chance to prove themselves. The music choices were great for this film, and I love that it doesn't end how you expect, with the team the movie focused on coming out victorious. It showed the people who were kind of the unsung underdogs win as they should. Ultimately, every film after this couldn't match what this film did, but good on them for trying. Thank you so much for watching this video. Have you seen all the films in this franchise? If so, comment down below and let me know how you'd rank them. Be sure to like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you're not already. And remember, be aggressive. Be, be aggressive.